corn and the bean. There are two words, home and house, used alternatively to mean the same thing. There is no home, instead there are only houses and there is a vast difference between the two. We try to make homes out of houses, but in fact home is projection. There is only a house that feels cold to its very core. We need a home, something cozy, something that belongs to us, something to which we belong. It needs to be an extension of our being. Indeed, home is an extension of our beings. Something which we can make part of us, something which is not just a place where you live, but which becomes alive with you. That is why we call all these houses where old people live, they call it. They are known as old age homes, not otherwise. They are not called houses, old age home and things like this. A house is a dead thing while a home is a living entity, but it is a projection. So those who are searching for a home will find themselves frustrated and again because they will find again and again that it turns out to be a house. Home was their idea. It was their illusion. It was their poetry and romance. They have been weaving and spinning something invisible around the house, which nobody else can see. Only they can see it, but it is just man is born homeless. Yes, he will make many houses into homes, but he will get frustrated and finally man dies homeless. To accept the truth brings a tremendous transformation. Then you do not search for a home because home is something there far away, something other than you and everybody is searching for a home. When you see it, when you see its illusoriness, then rather than searching for a home, you will start searching for a being that is born homeless, whose destiny is homeless forever. There is no way to make a home and this is a miracle. The moment you realize that there is no way to make a home and that this whole existence is home, then wherever you are, you are at home. Certainly then there is no question of making a home or any question of creating an illusion. You have accepted your homelessness, not with any unwillingness or resistance, instead joyfully, because it is good that you are born without a home, Otherwise, the home will be an imprisonment. No one is born with a home and verily everyone is born homeless. Just think, if people were born with a home, they would be imprisoned. To be homeless is to be free. It is freedom. It means there is no attachment, no obsession with anything outside. That you are not in need of getting anything of warmth from the outside. But that your warmth 
is within you. You have the source of warmth within you. You have the source of warmth inside. So wherever you are without a home, you are strangely at home. The people who are searching for a home are always getting into despair and finally are going to feel that we have been cheated. Life has cheated us. Somehow it gave us the desire to find a home and there is no home at all to go. It simply does not exist. We try it in every possible way through a husband, a wife, and then one brings children into the world. Instead one tries to create a family, a psychological home. One makes not a house, but tries to make it almost a living entity. He tries to make a house of his dreams and expect that it is going to be a fulfillment of warmth. That in, his, in this coldness, and it is vast, the coldness of the existence, the whole universe is so cold and so indifferent that you want to create a small shelter for yourself where you can feel that you are taken care of and something protects you. You want to feel that it belongs to you and you are an owner, not a homeless wanderer. But in reality, this kind of an idea is going to create misery for you because one day you will find that the husband you have lived with the wife you have lived with is a stranger. You cannot share your being. Even after living together for 50 years, the strangeness has not disappeared. And on the contrary, it has deepened. You were less strangers on the first day you met. As time has passed, you have been together, you have become more and more strangers to each other. Because you have come to know each other more and more, and now you do not understand at all who the other person is. You do not understand the ways and means. The more you have known, the less you have known. It seems that the more you have become acquainted with the person, the more you become aware that your ignorance about the other is absolute and there is no way to destroy it. No way to destroy it. Your children, you have always thought they were your children. And one day you find they are not your children. Because you remember this is an egg. And if you remember that this world is a fine stage on which we come to act our parts, the relationship, the husband, the wife, the father, the mother, the children, all are the actors on this stage. Deep down, they are all actors, just acting. The, your children, you have always thought they were your children. And one day you find they are not your children. You have been just a passage. They have come through. Khalil Gibran says through Prophet. In Prophet through Al Mustafa. Where does this character Al Mustafa emerge from? From nowhere. From nowhere. All of a sudden, the character Al Mustafa appears in Khalil Gibran's prophet. This is the master appears. You do not know anything about it, and all of a sudden, someone appears in front of you, and you recognize something 
unique about him and a different aura surrounds you appears from nowhere suddenly appears out of the, the thin of the clouds in prophet Almitra's master what about children Al-Mustafa says children are born through you not from you indeed you are the passage for the children to be born you have the mechanism for the children to be born they do not belong to you they have their own lives and they are absolutely strangers they do not belong to you they will find their own ways and their own lives kabir says in one of the couplet the girls have been taken away by the by their bridegrooms and the boys have been taken by the brides so you remain just alone as you were always the hindi couplet says bahue le gayi poot di le gaye jamai kahe kabir suno bhai sadhu tum rahe oot ke oot means you just remain stupid daughters are taken away by the son in laws by their husbands and the boys have been taken away by their brides and you remain just bar children do not belong to you they will find their own ways and their own lives one day and then they will leave you who is with you is your wife really with you or your husband really with you or children with you nobody is with anybody you are in a crowd always but alone either alone or in the crowd makes no difference either in the home or just a wanderer that too makes no difference i have never had a home when i left my father's home for the last time to come and live with my uncle i told him i will not be coming back again and he said you always say street thing this is your home i said that is where we differ neither is it my home nor it is your home this world is a big guest house where we come to spend some of our time and when couple years after he sold the house he told me you were right when i said this home is neither mine nor yours but you continue to live in an illusion that one day you will understand that this is not home and i told him a famous sufi story that i have been i have told many times before to get to the point i have heard once a king heard one night the sound of the footsteps somebody walking on the roof of his palace he could not believe it the palace was so well guarded how had someone reached the top he wondered so he shouted loudly who is there and who are you and the voice from the rooftop responded you should ask it yourself who are you the king rushed out and called the guards to catch hold of the man but he was not found and the next day again there was the same strange voice but the king recognized the voice this time it was the same man and the same voice and also the strange behavior that he had shown the night before to walk on the roof and then to talk in such a way 
And to say to the king, first you should ask, who are you? You do not even know that you are worried about me. You mind your own business, I am minding my business. The man was fighting with the guard at the gate of the palace saying, I want to stay in this caravan sarai guest house for a few days. The guard was saying again and again, you seem to be an absolute idiot and mistaken. This is not a guest house. This is the palace of the king, his home. And the man responded, then I would like to see the man who lives in such an illusion in thinking that this is his house. The king was listening. He recognized the voice. He called the guard and said, bring that man in. And he asked him, are you the same man who was on the roof yesterday and tonight? The man replied in affirmation, yes. And what were you doing there? inquired the king. He said, my camel was lost, so I was searching for it. The king replied, then you seem to be really mad. Your camel was lost on my roof. Has anyone ever heard of camels getting lost on the roof of the houses? And you are fighting with my guard and calling my house a guest house, a caravan, a sarai. This is very disrespectful to me. I am the king and this is my house. And you have to learn how to be him. And the man started laughing. He said, it's strange. You are telling me to learn how to behave and you yourself do not know at all what behavior means. I can tell you, I came here even before, once before and I found another man in your place. He was saying that this was his palace, his home. I had come before that too and there was another man and he was also saying that this is his home. Now you are saying this is your home. It is for you to decide now who is man. The king replied that was my father who had died. And when the first time you came you met my grandfather. The stranger said that is what I wanted to make clear to you. That they call this their home. And then they had to leave it behind. They could not take it with them. Then if it is not a guest house, then what it is you decide. This is an understanding that many people have been here who thought it to be their home and they are all gone. You will be gone too one day. When I come next time, when so many people stay here, come and go, what you call this, it is really a guest house. I told my father, one day you too will understand that this is not home. Because in this world we are born alone. In this world where we are born, we are born alone. We start dying the moment we are born. It will be better to call your home your graves. But you cannot call them homes because you are only dying in them, day by day, inch by inch. You are not living and since then I have been in many houses which people thought were my houses. Instead there is no possibility. It is good to understand that we are wanderers. 
I have lived in so many houses, so many places. Sometimes for five years, sometimes for ten years, sometimes for two days, sometimes for three days, week or two weeks or so. In my life, I have lived in many, many houses, but none belong to me. Sometimes the house I thought it belonged to me, but then it was sold. Because before me it was owned by someone else, then it was owned by me and it was sold. Then I lived in another house for some few years again. And since then I have been in many houses which people thought were my homes. Indeed there is no possibility. It is good to understand that we are wanderers searching for something, but the search can never be for a home. That means security, warmth, coziness or love from, the, uh, love from the outside, from somebody else, indeed, that is the wrong way. That is the way of the worldly man and he always ends in misery. And spiritual basically recognizes the fact that the search is not for home. The search is for who is this being. Indeed, the search is for the being that is born homeless and that will always remain homeless. Therefore, never search for the home because there is none. Search for your inner self because there is one. And finding that one suddenly, miraculously, the whole existence becomes your home. Wherever you are, you feel at home. Suddenly, miraculously, the whole existence becomes your home. And finding the one, suddenly, miraculously, the whole existence becomes your home. And you do not create it, project it or make it. Suddenly it is a revelation. You cannot believe how you have been missing it up to now. Indeed, the home is always where you were. The gypsies have a better name in the Indian language. The gypsies are basically from the state of Rajasthan called Rajputana in India. They have got their name Gypsy because they first went out of India to Egypt and from Egypt they entered Europe. It is Egypt that gave them the name Gypsy from Egypt. But they are really people from India and India their names were nomadic, Khanavadosh. Means those who have no home. They have their carts, carry their tents and the families and move from place to place. They deal with making some iron wares and iron items. They settle by the roadside somewhere, put up their tents, make their houses, live there for some time, do their business and move away. The name has tremendous beauty. It means a person whose home is on his shoulders. The home is on his shoulders. Thus, wherever he goes, he is always at home. The word Kana Vadosh or nomadic is tremendously significant. Etymology, it comes from Kana means home, Vadosh means on your shoulders. Your home is on your shoulders. It is not visible, it is there. But it is revealed only to those who can find who this wanderer is, who this seeker is. Rather than going after the sword, the search is for the seeker. And finding the seeker, you suddenly find the whole existence is your home. Wherever you are, you are at home. 
even in your body. Home means wherever you feel comfortable, wherever you feel at peace, you are at home. There is a Urdu poet, couplet, Dunya sarai hai, jagir samajhta hai, kabze mein jo hamesha rahe jagir usse kehte hai. Dunya sarai hai, the world is a wide guest house. And erroneously you consider it to be your property. Kabze mein jo hamesha rahe, that which ever remains, that which always remains in your possession, that is called your property. That is called your home. Because every house is a hotel and every place is a guest house. And even those who consider themselves slightly spiritual are indeed ignorant. Because they cannot understand the words of the Master when he says, I have no home and that I love to live in a guest house. The world is full of such pseudo-spiritual ones. The moment I say this to anyone at home, they feel offended. So this is a question of how you look at things. When I was in India, I was at home. When I was in Florida, I was at home. When I was in Boston, I was at home. And I am at home when I am in Trinidad and again I am at home wherever I am. And the prepositions and the prepositions makes no difference. I am indeed at home wherever I am. And at the same time, not in any home. And tomorrow no one knows, even I do not know where the life will take me. But wherever it takes me, I will be home again and always. I have found my real home by being in my innerness. That nobody can take away from me. For the simple reason that I am not making any projection which can be taken away. When I slept for one week in my car, parked on the roadside, that was my home. I slept as comfortably as I slept anywhere else. One week, no shelter, the car was the only shelter. No toilet and the washroom facilities, still there was comfort. Because I have found my home, I have found where I can be comfortable and that nobody can take away from me. For the simple reason I have not been making any projections which can be taken away. Just finding yourself, you find that whole existence is your home and that you are part of the whole existence. You are part of the whole existence. Search not for house, but for being. Being is your innerness, your home, where you are comfortable at peace. Only this much for this morning. <laughs>